Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're going to talk about making blazers a little bit. This is going to be a part one video. Um, I was going to do kind of a sew with me with my son's blazer but then I thought you know what blazers are one of those things that yes there are differences between uh, you know, female and male blazers a little bit. There's still a lot of crossover. And um, instead of doing a sew with me, I thought this might be more helpful or like a sew along. Um, I mean, a sew along, I'm sure would be very helpful for you guys, but um, I just don't have it in me to film an entire sew along right now for a blazer. <laughs> Maybe in the future, but definitely not right before we're getting ready to go to Italy. Um, but I thought it would be helpful if you are thinking of tackling a blazer, whether that be, you know, for yourself or a loved one, whatever, doesn't really matter the type, um, that some of these tips and tricks could be very helpful for you. So I thought that I would kind of do a you know, the fiddly bits, the things that if you've never made a blazer before that you might not know about, um, that kind of thing. And maybe give you a little bit of courage if it's something you've thought about taking or sewing and just haven't gotten there yet. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, the pattern that I'm going to be using, um, kind of patterns in general for blazers. Um, I'm going to be talking through the, the fabrics that I'm going to be using for mine and the interfacings, um, the notions that I've gathered and all that kind of thing, um, just to kind of help you get started. And then I'll do a part two where, um, I don't know how many parts this is going to be. <laughs> part two may be where I show you everything kind of um, interfaced and, you know, I don't know, talk you through a little bit more of the guts. It may, yeah, part two might be more of a, this is what the inside of the coat looks like. This is how with all of the, because there's a lot of infrastructure in a blazer. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like before it's all like put together. And then part three will just be, here's the finished blazer, um, that kind of thing, um, and show you that on um, my son, because that's who I'm making this one for. But again, this kind of goes across the board for any kind of blazer that you might be making. So that's kind of my plan with this one, just to make it a little bit different, um, give you guys some content to um, mull over and hopefully some inspiration because blazers really aren't hard. They are time consuming and there are a lot of little bitty steps, but if you break it up into like sizable chunks, it really isn't that bad. Um, I know that Closet Core Patterns has a sew or a uh, uh, class that you can take on making a blazer that walks you through making their Jessica blazer. So um, if it's something that you would like more handholding with, um, the Jessica blazer is a fabulous pattern. I've made that for myself, my daughter, my, my mom. Um, it's a really great blazer pattern. Um, so if you want a little bit more handholding um, in that regard, I would highly recommend. I've heard great things about the class. I've not taken the class, but I've heard great things about the class. But again, blazers, they're just a, if you just break up the steps into a lot of little pieces, it really isn't as hard as it may seem. There's just a lot of parts. So for this one, I am making Vogue 9097. I'll just pop a picture of the pattern here instead of holding it up, which is actually a tuxedo, so a shawl collar style um, blazer, because that's what my son wanted. Now, um, lot, notch lapel, just a little bit different. It's just a little different in how you sew that collar in, but that's really the only main difference between... Um, the shawl collar or tuxedo style jacket versus your more traditional, you know, the notched collar um, type lapel. So, um, or Revere collar. But um, yeah, that's really the only difference. But I think, I mean, there's still gonna, I'm still gonna want a, um, uh, oh my gosh, the twill tape that goes down for the fold line where you're, um, I, I just, the lapel line roll back the roll line. Oh my gosh. I'm like, well, that term just flew out of my head, the roll line. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like when I get to that point in the jacket. And I actually forgot my twill tape. Um, so I'll have to I'll show you that. I'll show you that in part two of the video. Um, but yeah, th so there's going to be a lot of similarities and I'm cheating a little bit by using some pre-made coat fronts that I'm going to show you here in a second as well. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the major difference. And whether you're making this for a male or a female, um, darts are really, you know, there's darts in this for the male, but it'll be a little bit different for, um, boobs, but that's really the only difference. This coat has a single vent in the back. Although if you have the double vents, they're done the same way, just, um, so double vent is where you have a vent on each of the princess seams in the back. Um, they're done the same way. You're just doing two as opposed to just one and center back. We're just doing the single, um, vent on the back of this one. I'll be bagging the lining. Um, and actually, I'll probably be 
bagging the lining just like I would for the Jessica blazer because the Jessica blazer is also a single um, vent in the back. So again, if you want some hand holding on that, they do have a class um, that they offer for that. Okay, so blazer patterns come with a ton of uh, pieces. <laughs> this one has 26 for the jacket. Um, this pattern also includes pants, but um, for the jacket, we have 26 pieces that we're dealing with, which I feel like I I'm going to have to do some drafting of some pieces um, myself. For instance, this does include your um, hem interfacings for the bottom of the coat where it's not fully interfaced. So the front of the coat gets fully interfaced. Um, your hems, you're going to want you know, interface, but they do have pieces for that as well as the sleeves. However, I'm going to be drafting my own interfacing because they do not have it for um, around the arm's eye. So that's the top of the sleeve of um, the sleeve cap up here, as well as a two piece sleeve, as well as the underarm of the sleeve um, right there at the arm's eye of the sleeve. Well, not the arm's eye of the sleeve. I'm basically interfacing the entire sleeve cap. <laughs> if you were to put there at the top of the sleeve, um, and I also want interfacing around the arm's eye so that we don't have any stretching out of the bias in that area. Sorry, it's making that very complicated. It didn't need to be. Um, let's walk through the fabrics I'm gonna be using uh, first, and then I'll walk you through the notions. All right, so I showed you guys this um, in a previous video when I was doing my plans. Um, there's been a little bit of a change of plans here. My, my son really wanted something kind of shiny and we just went back and forth and I had bought this cotton sateen from Minerva, but I'm like, this just isn't gonna be enough bulk for the jacket. And it was a little more uh, dark purple than what he wanted. I bought so much purple fabric for this jacket, folks. Um, what I've decided to do in the end, this is a um, silk, Dupioni, and it is um, shot silk, so it, it has different color warp and weft threads. So it looks just a little bit different. You can kind of see it's very wrinkly right now. I've washed and dried it, and I just haven't ironed it yet, so it's very wrinkly. It'll be very smooth when all is said and done. But you can kind of see the change in color a little bit. Um, so it's got a little bit of a sheen. So we've decided to use this for the body of the coat. This type of silk has pretty good um, body in and of itself. It you know it doesn't fall in on itself, but it is a thin fabric. So I do have decided that we are going to interline it. So what that means is, and I'm going to use the fabric from Minerva, this silk um, or this cotton sateen. So what that means is that it's going to give it a little bit more structure, um, but I'm basically cutting out all of the body pieces of the jacket in this cotton, and I will do that first. And then I will lay those pieces on top of my silk, base them together as one, and um, then sew the jacket together that way. Um, so that each piece of the body of the jacket, so what I mean by that is, you know, my welts for the pockets, well, that'll just be the silk. Or um, my facing, I, I'll just, you know, interface the silk. I won't use um, the cotton behind it. Um, my collar pieces, those will only be interfaced silk. Um, you know, I don't need to have this behind it. So really it is the front, the back. I think there is a side piece. Yes, <laughs> the side piece. So all the pieces that go around the body of the jacket and the sleeves will all be um, interlined with the cotton. So there'll be two layers, cotton and the silk. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, when it comes to the interfacing in those areas, I'm going to be putting all of my fusible interfacings, well, and so in. Um, all of my interfacings are gonna go on the cotton. So I'm, I won't have that um, peeking through because I'm only interfacing the hem. I didn't want there to be a line. Now you can use pinking shears um, to cut that solid line so that you can't see it through the jacket but I'm just gonna interface my cotton pieces so then there's gonna be a, a layer between there um, so you're not gonna be able to see those hard lines. So that goes for uh, my sleeves where I'm gonna have, you know, it stopping at the interfacing, stopping just at that hemline and also where I do my sleeve caps. Um, so again, I'll be drafting all the interfacing that needs to go around the sleeve, probably just the top of the side because the front will be fully interfaced and I'm gonna do a back stay, which means I'm going to interface the back 
um, upper back portion of the jacket as well. Um, it kind of gets curved. Again, I will show you what all of this looks like before um, when I get it all constructed in the next part of this type of this video. But um, those are the ones that I'm going to be drafting myself. It's very easy. I'm just drawing it in, tracing it off, and <laughs> and gluing it on to the back of the jacket. So again, I'll make the body of the jacket in the cotton fuse all the interfacing to it, and then lay it on top of my silk for um, cutting out the body pieces. Now, I will put interfacing directly onto the collar pieces, the welt pieces, um, the, um, yeah, the lapel, any of those type of pieces where they aren't going to be backed with cotton. Um, I will go ahead and just, because that entire piece gets fused with the interfacing when it comes to those. So that's kind of that. So those are the two that, um, I mean, you're not gonna ever see this once it's inside the jacket, but that is for that. And then I'm using just this um, acetate. It is a different color, but the way it turns, I think it's fine. But the, I had already bought this at Minerva for the lining. It's been washed. Yes, it's been washed and dried. Um, so it's gonna be the uh, lining for my jacket. And I think that that's gonna work fine. Um, also by putting well, no, I guess that's not true. So my interfacing is not gonna be sandwiched between my outer layer and my inner layer. My interfacing will be just on the inside of the cotton. So it will be silk, right side of cotton against the wrong side of silk, and then the interfacing will be on the wrong side of the cotton, if that makes sense. Again, I'll show you what everything looks like when it's all, um, when the guts of the jacket are all put together before I sew anything up. So that is the plan for the fabric. I've talked about that before. Now, I um, also talked about this a little bit. So I made my son a tie for one of his other um, outfits and I took the interfacing out of this tie to use for his tie. So now um, silk um, ties are cut on the bias. So if you get a good silk tie, um, you can use, it's already cut on the bias. So you can just cut strips out of it and have really cool bias strips. So I'm gonna be using the remnants of this tie for the silk and I'm just gonna be making um, flat piping that I'm gonna put, just sew it right in between where the facing and the lining connect, just for something kind of cool. Um, just as a little design detail. And I'll show you guys when I do that as well. I don't know that there is a pocket on the inside. Oh no, there is an inside pocket, number 22. So I guess there is an inside pocket for the, um, you know, the inside that's kind of like right there at the um, lapel that, that men's, well, and female jackets. I don't know what that pocket's for, <laughs> but it's usually inside the lining. Um, and I think that this one does has that as well. So if that is the case, and I'll know this when I get in there a little bit more, but if there is a little welt pocket that's on the inside of the jacket, I'm going to do the lips of that welt in this fabric as well, just to have something kind of cool in there. And I should have enough. It's amazing how much um, uh, bias tape that you can get out of one tie. I feel like I got over six yards of it when I did two inch wide strips. And I'm, I have a five eighths inch seam allowance. So these need to be, I just want a little bit of piping poking out, um, but obviously it needs to be bigger than that. I don't know, we're gonna play around with that. I'll let you know what's what I end up cutting my strips to size to be, but yes, I'll be using that. Um, and if I have enough, I'll do my little um, welts there in the inside pocket in that as well. All right, interfacings. I have bought from Wawac, um, they're already done coat fronts. So these are, this is hair canvas. Um, it's not made out of hair anymore, um, but it's got the, look, now this is probably not the correct shape that I'm gonna need and I will cut that as needed. But this is the, in fact, I know it's not. This is more for a Revere um, fold back type of collar. Uh, so I will cut this so that it's more like my um, Shaw collar that we're using. But this already has all the layers of interfacing that get um, sewn and it's kind of pad stitched. Um, which is just zigzag stitched on there, but that's just a step that's cutting out. So this goes in the entire front of the jacket. So I will interface my entire front of jacket with my fusible interfacing, which we'll talk about here in a second. But then this will get sewn in 
in the seam allowances, so it kind of floats. Um, it's a sewing interfacing there in the front. Now this is for a size 38 jacket, because um, that's the smallest Wawag had. He is a 34 jacket, so this will need to get cut down, but I thought that's fine anyway. So then I can just cut this all down to the um, pattern that I'm gonna be using. I mean, this is gonna be way too long in here too, because I think it's for a coat. But then this just gives me a little bit of cheater um, structure in there. It pads out that shoulder area really well, um, so I can get away from having to do that. Um, I probably will, well, I don't know. I probably will still do, um, some tape into the, um, uh, Oh my gosh, why can't the roll line? Why can't does that keep going out of my head? Which is where your collar rolls back on itself. Um, and I, I can, you know, show you what that looks like. Um, it's pretty easy. It just gets cat stitched right in there and you're pulling it a little tight. Um, it's kind of fun, a little bit of tailoring to do. Uh, but there are some ready to wear quick ways to do that as well. Again, that Jessica class is great for that. Those are in the Jessica um, instructions. But this is just has all this built out for you already. Um, and this stabilizes the front armhole uh, for the front piece really well. So I don't have to do interfacing in that area um, with that already there. So um, yes, you, I am doubling up on interfacing in the front because I'm going to do the fusible and then pop this in as a sew in. But you want a lot of structure there in the front of the jacket. Um, the welt pockets will be cut into this. So, you know, because it's all part of the front of the jacket when you go to do your welt pockets. It all comes out really, really nice. It gives a lot of good structure. So I am cheating a little bit by um, using, not really cheating, but I am using the size 38 coat fronts that are already um, pad stitched. Pad stitch actually is something that gets happens by hand that all these interfacings get put on. Like I'm talking like um, the tailors in Europe that do a lot of this stuff by hand. This is the cheater way to do that and quicker. So I did buy those. Um, for the interfacing on the rest of the jacket, I am using the Pro Weft Supreme in Medium from Fashion um, Sewing Supply. This stuff's fantastic. It's, it's, I've been using it a little bit for some more of the tailoring things I've been doing. Lovely, love this stuff. So that's what I'll be using for the fusible interfacing for this project. Now, I also might use a lighter weight interfacing. Um, you don't need that in a lot of places, but sometimes it's nice to have a lighter weight interfacing for like your under collar. Again, I'm not doing a, the notched collar, so my collar pieces look a little bit different because it's a shawl collar. And my guess is that it's all um, one, you know, it's a grown on collar piece. I mean, I'll have an inch or a facing. Let me look here. Yeah, I don't have a collar piece at all because it's all built in and it's just the facing that gets to be the other side of that. So yeah, so I, I this is a little bit different than if I were doing a notched collar. So again, a lot of times with, um, if you're doubling up, so you maybe want your facing um, on the inside of your coat and a little bit lighter weight interfacing or your under collar as well, just so it's not too bulky. Um, you want your outside facing pieces. So like if you're doing a notched collar or a notched lapel, um, the outside, maybe it's the, cause in the, yeah, the out, the facing is actually what you're looking at on that. So anything that's outward facing, you want the heavier duty, um, uh, interfacing, but anything underneath you can get away with just the lighter weight interfacing. It just cuts down on bulk a little bit. Um, and again, that's also part of the Jessica. Highly recommend that. I mean, I think that that would be great if you've never made a blazer before and you're really nervous about it and want some hand holding. I've just heard really great things about that class. All right. And then as far as structure goes, the last little bit here. Um, oh, I didn't bring my sleeve heads over here either. Um, I have ordered um, the shoulder pads. So the pattern calls for half inch shoulder pads. These are my favorite. They're just like the felt punched um, shoulder pads. Also got them at Wawac. I'll list all of this down below. Um, but those will go into the shoulders and then I will be putting sleeve heads in. That just really helps um, support the sleeve. Um, again, I'll show you guys all of that when um, I get the jacket put together before I close everything up. So you can see what all the guts look like because I think that that's kind of helpful to be able to visualize that. So that will be in part two. And I'll talk you through those parts. But yes, I have shoulder pads that will be used as well. And then finally, the last little bits and tricks I've got here. I'm going to do self-covered buttons on this one, I think. 
Um, I just think that's gonna look a little bit better, but I'm not doing bound buttonholes. I'm gonna do machine buttonholes on this jacket, and um, I don't have the color I'm gonna be using, but I am gonna use buttonhole thread. This is the Guterman Mara 30. That is my favorite um, thicker thread. It just makes a little bit better, um, more substantial looking buttonhole, but I'll be, I won't be using white. I'll be using, um, I just, it's not here yet, the color that uh, matches my jacket. Um, and then self-colored, but self-covered buttons. Um, I think you need a, oh, I always get confused like with this. I think it's a, you need a five eighths and a three quarter. Okay, so this pattern does call for um, one three quarter inch button and nine five eighths inch buttons. Um, the five eighths inch are for the uh, sleeves and then, and maybe for the inside, there may be a button or something on the inside for that inside pocket. And then the three quarter inch button is for the front of the jacket. And there's just, the one button on the front of this one. Um, but I'm gonna do self-covered. So that equates to, and I have to look this up every time, but 24L for the 5 8 button and 30L for the three quarter button. <laughs> I just have to look up the button sizes and how that equates to um, like metric or imperial sizes. Anyway. I am gonna try the um, to do that, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes, but I don't, I don't know. Making covered buttons can be kind of a pain, but um, we'll see how that goes. So there we have it. Those are all of the bits and bobs that I have um, collected for this um, project. Again, I'm still waiting on the um, thread to come because I did, I, I, normally I don't have to order thread. I have so much thread that I usually have a color, but I want this to be pretty close to color. So I have ordered um, the Guterman Mara 100 thread to sew up the jacket in and then the Guterman Mara 30 for the buttonholes so that I can get just a really good looking buttonhole. And I'm very excited. I think my Bernina um, 770 makes some beautiful buttonholes. So I think I'm going to get a really good looking buttonhole. Um, I don't, I'm not going to make my buttonholes work buttonholes on the sleeves. I think that's kind of pointless, but I will go ahead and sew those, I think, sew those on. Um, I may just end up sticking the buttons on the sleeve and calling it good. Um, I mean, that's what I do when I make the Jessica, so we'll see. Um, sometimes that's good enough, and uh, a lot of the ready-to-wear is going to look that way as well. Um, and if you put a buttonhole, sew a buttonhole on there, it does make it hard to um, change sleeve length if you ever need to. If you you know, give that to someone else and they need to shorten the sleeves or lengthen the sleeves or whatever. Um, it, even though you can unpick those and redo them, it's a whole big mess. So, um, I may just leave those off. We'll kind of see as we get going and how my time looks. Um, you know, we're starting to get down to the wire here and this is going to take me a little bit. Um, I'm going to break it up into steps. And again, I will come back for a part two and show you the guts of the jacket and what that looks like and kind of talk you through, um, all of those bits and bobs. But, um, yeah, this is going to take a while. If nothing else, just prepping everything, getting everything cut out, getting everything, you know, the pattern cut out, then the fabric cut out, um, getting everything interfaced. I mean, that's probably at least a day just there, um, of sewing. So once you get sewing, a jacket, um, it's not as bad, uh, other than putting, I mean, even what pockets go in pretty quickly. Um, it really is all the prep work that has to go into that, all that infrastructure that has to get uh, put into the front of the jacket and that sort of thing. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful for anyone else that's out there getting ready to do a blazer. Again, this is part one, and I will be back with a part two while I will show you the guts. Again, this is not going to be a sew along. I apologize. Maybe later on down the road. Um, but for right now, um, I do know that Closet Core does have a very good um, blazer class uh, for their Jessica um, that obviously walks you through their pattern, which is a fabulous pattern. But um, it would probably be, I mean, it'd be very... Um, helpful as well as if you're making any blazer pattern uh, for male or female really. So uh, yeah, take a look at that and I'll link that class down below as well if that's something you're interested in. I have no affiliate with that, just some resources that might be helpful for you guys later on down the road. 
All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I will be back on Friday. Um, I think it's gonna, we're starting to get into some lookbook stuff for the Italy sewing. It's either gonna be my daughter's um, things that I have made for her, or it's gonna be my um, three special occasion dresses that I have made to take with me. Um, I'm just not sure which one. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any of the reveals of the sewing that I'm doing, period. But right now specifically for our trip to Italy. Uh, and then Sunday will be part two of the M8163 sew along. I think I'm saying that number right. Or 8361. Maybe it's 8361. <laughs> sew along. It'll be part two and we'll be making the bodices up. All right, guys. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again on Friday. Bye.